offer specific specific sounds like we're recording now specifically working in k-12 using this pooled testing uh program um so we've been at this for almost a year continuously improving the program getting feedback from uh superintendents district nurses school staff principals teachers students and parents so it's a well Warren program, we're, we're excited to bring it to you. Um, why does regular testing help maximize in-person learning? Well, if you test regularly, um, asymptomatic, so not just wait until uh, uh, students have, students or staff have symptoms, then you catch uh, case, positive cases earlier in the virus's cycle and you reduce the likelihood that uh, that the virus will spread in classrooms. Think of it as pulling the positive cases out earlier before those students can spread the virus to their classmates. We know that between 20 and 25% of all cases will never show symptoms. So if you only test and you symptomatic, um, you'll never catch them. Uh, we also know that uh, for uh, three to five days before you are uh, showing symptoms, you could be contagious. And so uh, testing, testing weekly and identifying those asymptomatic cases will actually allow classrooms to stay open. Uh, you might pull some positive cases out when you first start testing, but over time, you'll eliminate uh, the spread of the virus in, in, in classrooms, or, or this will help to eliminate the spread. Um, this program in particular has, is designed to be simple. Um, it's a self swab, uh, a lower nasal swab, um, and we have we have observed kids as young as kindergarten be able to self swab with ease. Um, it takes less than 15 minutes per classroom to collect the samples, um, and so it's it's simple and easy to uh, uh, to implement. It gives school communities peace of mind as you're pulling those positive cases out of out of uh, the, the classroom and your positive cases go down, you have insight into the public health of each school and of each classroom. It's secure. Uh, the personal identifiable information and the protected health information um, are of students who participate are maintained at the school unless you have to do a follow-on individual diagnostic test, which I'll talk about, but the vast majority of students uh, uh, their information will never go beyond the school setting. Uh, it, it will stay uh, secure and private in the school setting. And it's empowering kids, as, as Edgar talked about, um, this impact on, on the students, as you well know, as you've, you've lived, they've, they've had so little control over uh, their lives in the past 18 months. And we've found that this simple act of swabbing once a week actually makes students feel empowered that they're contributing to their being able to stay with in-person learning or just stay in school with their, with their friends. So here are the, I'm gonna talk about the elements of uh, the DISHES funded uh, program. So the, uh, the, the core of the program is cohort testing or pooled testing. It just means testing a group of people uh, using one test as a first line um, and, if, uh, and if it's positive, uh, then you do a follow-up test. But uh, the core is weekly uh, classroom testing, um, individual testing as required uh, uh, if, if, if pools are positive, and I'll talk about that. Uh, support staffing. So we've heard over and over again that school staffs, staffs are overloaded, um, uh, contact tracing, um, uh, all the other COVID-related complexity on top of um, what is already a strained uh, system um, uh, really requires that a program be easy to implement. And one of the ways we've made it easy to implement is to offer on-site clinical support. So uh, uh, people with a medical background will come on site to your school and help on collection day if it's, a, if it's a young students that need help with swabbing, they can do that. Um, otherwise they can observe as classrooms test, 
um, and, and, and help in ways I'll talk about a little bit later, but staffing support is also included. Um, and then all the administration and reporting is something that is included in the program. The public health reporting that, that many of you have been doing, if you have been part of the Binex Now program for the last year and a half, that is all taken care of through our uh, testing program. So you have these four elements, cohort testing, required individual testing, uh, uh, staffing support if, if requested, and then all the administration and reporting. So how does cohort testing work? What is it? Um, well, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, students and the teacher, if uh, they choose to participate, um, uh, they, all the students in the classroom will swab. They'll put all the swabs into one single tube. And that tube is tested one time. You test the pool. And this is only consented students because this is a completely voluntary program. If a district uh, or a school chooses to adopt this program, it is still up to the parents to opt their children, the parents or guardian, to opt their children into the program. So only students whose parents have consented will be included in the classroom testing and any individual follow-on testing. So you have one test um, and you, uh, if the test is negative, uh, no further action is required for that classroom for that week. Um, if the test is positive, then you would do a follow-on test um, with the members of the, uh, uh, that were part of the pool uh, to figure out which uh, of those students um, or staff uh, uh, kind of turn the pool positive. It's easy, it's fast, self-swab, and it's, uh, it, it's something that even the students um, kind of have made uh, uh, fun jokes about. Uh, they say that the, the swabs have to go in boogers down and other such colloquialisms that, that younger children can do. Um, uh, but it's, uh, uh, it, it's something that they actually come to enjoy. Um, so I did talk about a positive pool. First, let me say that we've been doing this nationally, um, well over 100,000 tests across many, many states in urban and rural districts, in all, all kinds of school settings you can imagine. And over all of those from January through July, we averaged a 1% positivity rate. So that means that one in 100 classrooms that are tested would test positive and require a follow-on test. So you might be wondering, well, with Delta over the past uh, uh, couple of months, how has that changed? Well, since August 1st, it has gone up but it, 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 it's, it's gone up to an average of 2.2%. That, that varies by, by geography. In our program in Arizona, it's about, three, it's about 4%. In our program in California, it's about 1%. In our program in Maryland, it's about 2%. Um, so it, there are some variations, uh, but over all tests, um, we've seen even in, in a Delta setting, we've seen a positivity rate of 2.2%. That doesn't mean that 2.2% of students are positive. That just means that 2.2% of the pools are positive. And if five, or, if five to 25 students are part of that pool, the prevalence rate is much, much lower than 2.2%. But the point is that you're able to quickly test with the first cohort test and only one, these days, only one in 50, times will you need to do the second step, which is the individual, uh, the individual test, either through uh, an antigen, a rapid antigen test, uh, or through an individual PCR test. Um, you have uh, uh, all, many of you are familiar with rapid antigen tests because you were part of the Binex Now uh, Texas State program. Um, this is a very similar test. Uh, we, there's actually a national shortage of Binex Now uh, test kits and, and, and that program is coming to an end, but we have uh, an access bio care start, uh, uh, fast antigen test with very similar specifications, sensitivity and specificity, 10 to 15 minute turnaround time. It's a very similar in, in specs uh, to the Binex now that you um, uh, have come to, uh, to be used to. Um, and if you do have 
buy next now left over that you would like to use as part of this program, those also work. Um, uh, those also work for our in our portal. So you can use those in our portal as part of the reflex testing if there's a positive pool. Um, so the main point here is uh, fast, easy, secure pooled testing only results in an individual follow-up 2.2% um, uh, of the time. And in addition to being simple, secure, quicker, you also save a lot of, you, you, you save resources by testing one. And, and Edgar will walk through kind of uh, an example of that towards the end. Uh, but essentially we designed the program to save money on the testing side, because you're testing five to 25 people in one test, take that money and reinvest it in the on-site support so that uh, uh, teachers and school staff have support to be able to manage the program. Um, uh, and, and that's been a hallmark and one of the pieces where we've gotten a lot of positive feedback. I talk about um, the, the clinical support. So this is uh, the funding uh, that comes from, that is allocated from DISHES and from TEA um, uh, can be used for this on-site support. These are registered nurses, certified nursing assistants, medical assistants, et cetera, uh, LPNs. Um, people that can come on um, and can help uh, register the tubes, can help keep track of the cohorts. Um, we have a, excuse me, we have a simple Excel tool that is used at the school site in order to uh, keep track of the cohorts. Like I said, the information is kept at the school um, unless there is a positive pool. And then in the follow-on test, which is an individual test, we would register each individual as into the portal in order to do, because that's required for public health reporting in the same way that you had to do that for your Binex um, uh, program. Uh, the, the, the portal um, uh, is, is easy to use um, and it's very uh, clear. Um, we have a role that we call a test champion, which is the person at the school. It's often a school nurse. Um, it can be um, a, a, an administrative assistant. Uh, it could be an assistant principal. Sometimes it's the principal. The person who would want to see results and who would help to make decisions if there's a positive pool. And that person uh, would, would have uh, access to the portal where they can view all of, the, all of the tests over time and you can export data from the portal. Um, and if there's a positive, you get, a, you get a, 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 an email that alerts you, will go into the portal and check to see which of the classroom tests actually was positive. Um, uh, on, uh, on, if you choose to sign up, um, all you have to do is ensure that you're registered uh, with the TEA for the, uh, for the program. Um, if you already have seen that you have a budget allocation, um, then you are already registered. So you're free to sign up with us. We would get uh, uh, some information on each of the schools or sites where you want to test. And about two weeks later, we can have a uh, first test day. And during those two weeks, we are doing um, onboarding for district and school staff. Um, and we are also, uh, if you choose to get on-site support, we're, um, uh, uh, on-site support and connecting the on-site support clinician to your school um, or, or many schools and setting a testing schedule and then on, on test day, uh, uh, either someone at the school or the on-site support person um, would, would take the supplies that we ship to you uh, that I'll show in a sec and uh, uh, go around to each of the classrooms and observe um, uh, testing for those who, uh, students who have been consented. Um, and then uh, they would hand off, they put these in a box uh, hand it off to a courier who's going to courier that to one of Quest's labs in either Houston or Dallas, whichever is closer. We use a courier um, uh, for the fastest possible turnaround time. 
um, and to make sure that the tests get there uh, as quickly as possible and as securely as possible so that the quests can run the tests um, and, then, and then input the results back into the portal. And you would get the results uh, uh, within um, 48 hours. Um, and how it would typically work is if you test on a, on a Monday, you do your pooled testing on a Monday, you're likely to get your test results back uh, by, by Tuesday um, uh, towards the end of the day. And that would set you up for any necessary follow-up testing on Wednesday. Um, and we can also send on-site support to come and do the follow-up testing, either the uh, rapid antigen, the care start, which is right on site, or the PCR um, follow-up, which would take, which would be a Quest PCR, and that would take another um, uh, 24 hours to get results. Um, we we work uh, with our school community uh, to really support you um, every step of the way. Um, uh, we'll help you through onboarding, answering questions. We have a lot of resources uh, available to help a lot of um, uh, materials. I'll show you a page that we give, uh, that we have for parents. We have email templates so that you can, if you're gonna send out the digital consent. So we have an, an online consent form um, and we, uh, you send that out to uh, parents and they can very easily just click through and, and do online consent. That's in English. We've also translated the consent into um, uh, 24 languages. Um, and those would be offline paper consents. Um, uh, so you can consent in, in, in multiple ways. Can get information or school and district uh, folks can get information. Uh, I see that there's questions coming in and I promise um, I will uh, leave, leave time um, uh, in order to, to answer them uh, in a bit. Um, uh, like I talked about, we have uh, uh, our consent forms, communications, uh, an, an on uh, school portal, our website, we have a support desk um, where you can submit a ticket and you get, a, you, you get a result back, an answer to your question back within usually about 30 minutes. And then we have you know, videos and demonstrations, materials that help students uh, get ready for the testing, testing day. This is just a, a, a kind of a, a, a summary of the various um, uh, elements of the support center, um, uh, videos and webinars, easy to follow instructions that are shareable, um, various uh, guide, onboarding guides for the various roles, um, uh, uh, checklists so that folks can, can know that they're on track uh, leading up to test day. Um, this is what comes in, uh, this is what we ship you for your pooled testing kits. Um, and if you choose to do follow-up testing with uh, uh, the antigen, uh, rapid antigen test, we will ship those uh, to the school as well. Um, so you'll have everything shipped to you and ready to go for first testing day and then for any required follow-up testing. Um, and then just uh, a, a very robust support center online where you can answer a lot of uh, questions that you have. Again, what we provide, the, the, the tubes, the swabs, it's, again, it's a lower nasal swab, an AN, anterior nares. It's, it's not a deep swab, it's a shallow, it's, it's, a, it's akin to a, a Q-tip. Um, and it just, uh, you just swab in the lower part of your, of your nose. Um, uh, and then just other, other parts of, uh, of, of, of what is needed for test day. Um, we, we have content that we've created because we want students to be engaged, not just in keeping in the safety of, of testing, but also in the science of testing. This is a complex, the PCR test is a complex uh, 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 test. Um, and this is an opportunity that we have kind of uh, uh, brought to life through comic books and coloring sheets to help them understand what's going on behind the scenes and how this PCR test is actually detecting COVID and helping to keep classrooms safe. And stickers and, 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 and various ways to, uh, to engage students. 
as I talked about, we have specific materials that are uh, targeted to answer families' questions. Um, uh, we have a lot of the commonly asked questions. Um, in addition to this kind of uh, uh, general overview, there's a FAQ on our website that's designed specifically for families to answer their questions. And we also have blog posts where we kind of turn the, um, uh, the, 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 the questions that we get most frequently um, uh, and, and turn those into more expansive blog posts um, caring about genetic privacy, um, uh, pandemic educator resources, et cetera. So um, lots of resources online, uh, as well as live uh, uh, folks to answer the phone and answer your question, or you can submit a ticket um, online. Um, so that's that's the uh, a basic overview. Um, uh, Edgar, were you going to walk through the uh, pricing? Yes. Yes, thank you, Tim. So obviously, what does this all cost? Every one of you have been allocated some funds from the uh, federal grant. So how can we make that extend a little bit further, not only with more testing, but also, as Tim has indicated, how do we leverage some of that funding to allow for some services to come on site to help alleviate some of that burden that uh, the schools have? Right now, our pricing to the state is that the pooled PCR test that Tim talked about, the 25 swaps to one tube is $150. The rapid antigen, which is the care start antigen is $19. And then to have staffing come in and help you out, it's $100 per person with a minimum of about six hours, which is usually what it will take to administer uh, some of the administrative duties uh, that Tim talked about. So how do you stretch these dollars based on these numbers, based on leveraging the pot polling? So if we can go to the next slide, here's an example, say or a classroom that does the pool polling. While you have the five students going into one pod, that one pod is $150 to the state. If you do that same kind of classroom and that same testing with a point of care antigen, you now then have to take each individual student with each individual point of care antigen at a cost of $19 per antigen test for a total of about 475. So as you can see, there's a significant amount of savings here, almost $325 savings going with the pot pooling, plus the advantages of pot pooling that Tim talked about with regards to greater span, you get to test more the school entirely, the uh, positivity rate, obviously, for the pods that come in will be much less. So overall, the pod pooling is really the way to go to help you achieve, extend your dollars, get more testing done more frequently, expand your reach, and make sure that you're getting all of the testing needed for you all to make determinations on how to continue to keep the kids in the classroom. And um, Edgar, I'd add too that um, it takes a lot of time to run 25 antigen tests. I've, I've observed uh, assembly lines where you're trying to move students through uh, uh, with several on-site support, trying to test large groups. Antigen is great for symptomatic testing. It's great um, when you're testing kind of a, a, a limited group um, and it's fast and quick results and it's inexpensive. But for asymptomatic regular testing, it's time consuming. It's much more time out of, out of learning. Um, you're collecting individual information from each student every single time and putting that into a portal because all that has to be reported up through public health reporting. Um, and so in, in, in addition to the point about dollar savings, um, there's also the point uh, about just time um, and time out of the cl cl classroom and the complexity of a program. Very good point, Tim. Thank you for that. So and, how do we get started? Oh, go Tim? ahead. Oh. So how do we get started? Uh, we have a URL uh, that is in the TA website where you can basically one click and you'll get started with Quest regarding your K through 12 COVID testing. This, web, this uh, URL will, will produce an impact, uh, uh, an intake form where we will then contact you to get the ball rolling regarding the program specifically for that school or for the schools per the school district. 
So you fill out the form in the link, you're contacted by one of our representatives, and you can then learn how we can work together to help your staff and your students stay in school. So I highly encourage you all to pick Quest as your testing partner as you move forward with your COVID-19 testing plans. And we're ready to partner with all of the school districts in the state of Texas. Yeah, and I would, I would add before we're, we're about to move to questions, um, I would also add that we would love to have a, a follow-up conversation. If you're unsure, if you have specific questions that we don't get to today, we are open to answer, to talk to every district in school to specifically answer your questions, to help you think through how this um, would work in your school setting, to help estimate the costs. We've already built kind of a financial model where we can put in the inputs of your um, uh, school or district to get an estimate um, uh, of, of what it would cost. Um, so you can help make that kind of uh, uh, understand that for the most part with, with the, um, where we have already done this um, uh, cost estimation that's falling um, well below the allocation um, that, uh, that has been, been given by the, uh, by the state. Um, uh, but we're pleased that the, going to this URL and submitting this information is not a commitment of any kind, um, but we would love to be able to talk to you, even if it's just to answer questions, um, even if you're not sure. It's, it's, that's why we're here. Um, I'm going to start going through the questions, if that's okay. Um, there's a proactive question. Uh, go into depth regard, regarding the on-site hey, support. Hey, Jim. Yes. I think GEA was going to review the questions and send those to you that um, that they wanted you to answer. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, Timothy. Thank you for that. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm just going to go through and make sure we're answering the ones that uh, that we that we were able to answer. Um, that's all. Um, so yeah. First question, and I think there's a couple of questions around here. What is the process for pooling and and after the, uh, sorry, what are the process pooling after the specimens are collected? And I think you went over that, but would you touch on that a little bit more, please? Sure, so after the specimens are collected, um, uh, they are just put into a box that has, you know, sleeves for up to 40. Um, you, the, the school would have a courier um, schedule um, the courier would come uh, during, so if you're testing between 8 and 11 or collecting, uh, collecting specimen between 8 and 11, the courier would come between 12 and 2, pick it up and drive it um, to, the, to the lab that's been designated for that school. So it's a simple, uh, it's simply putting the tubes into um, a box, handing the box over to the courier uh, when they show up. And the next interaction is you get the results back in the portal. Thank you. Uh, for the individual testing, when there is a positive case in the pool slash classroom, who does the administration and reporting? So uh, the the administration, if you choose to to uh, avail yourself of on-site support, that would be a clinical person who would come on site and do that testing um, for you, and they would do it through our portal, um, and it that in, that's an end-to-end -end service that includes physician authorization. Um, and also public health reporting. So it would be totally hands-off from the school's perspective, from a reporting, um, it wouldn't, you wouldn't be using the standing physician authorization that you've been using for the last year for the Binex program. We have a physician network built into our workflow um, and, and we have physicians that are literally approving orders as they come through um, authorizing that individual test. And then once the results are put in uh, uh, to the portal, the, all of that information is automatically uh, pushed to the right uh, public health reporting for the state of Texas. Uh, and just to clarify on there, uh, districts will still need to do their own reporting through the state uh, dashboard that is currently required. Uh, so will training for school personnel be provided and is there a charge? Uh, there is not a charge for, for training. Um, we have onboarding uh, question and answer sessions. Um, a lot of the materials, uh, you essentially get a series of onboarding emails that are introducing new resources and it's a self-guided, but then every day we have uh, a scheduled one hour onboarding Q&A that any school uh, or district representative can attend 
um, and get their questions answered live. In addition, if we're onboarding a whole district, we'll typically have a first session with, with whatever the, whoever the designated person is for each school or site. We'll have a session for that district where we walk them through, we, we get them signed up in the portal, they order their first uh, set of supplies, they become familiar with logging into the portal, and we give them the, 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 the first basic overview of onboarding. So we do that um, for all districts that, that onboard. And there's no Thank charge you. that's included. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, this has been a recurring question in all of our webinars. Um, can you go? Can you go to multiple locations during that six hours? And is time travel to locations included in in that? Um, and how many people typically go to each site? Right. So it's usually teams of two, and they can uh, they they usually do a morning and an afternoon, depending on how your schools are clustered and the size of the school you might be able to hit three and it's a minimum of six hours. So they can work longer than six hours. They can work eight hours or nine hours. And then you would pay a hundred times eight or a hundred times nine. So you can really stretch that to be able to hit at least two uh, schools and sometimes three. Now, if it's a large high school, for instance, we might need to send you know, two teams of two and it might take uh, you know, more time. Um, but we work with you to kind of do the operational planning. Um, and you can also, uh, uh, it, it, it's not all or nothing. If you want to have, if you're a district and you have some schools where you think on-site support is absolutely critical um, and others that are maybe smaller, more contained for whatever reason, you think they can, they can manage it themselves, you can just send support to the, to the schools that you, that you choose. The, the other thing I would say is it's, if a district wants to participate, not you don't have to do every school and you don't have to do every school at once. If you want to just pilot it in one or two schools to, to see how it feels and see how it works, that's, that's totally fine. Um, uh, so we can be very flexible. It also doesn't have to be testing every single week. It can be every other week. You can change the frequency depending on the situation that's going on uh, in the community. So there's definitely flexibility. Um, built in, and, and all of these things can be kind of uh, tailored to each school or district. Thank you. And do they have to do pool testing with your services? Right. So we are yes, we're we, we are we are uh, uh, pooled testing with Reflex um, is what we believe the most appropriate resource um, uh, uh, resource uh, uh, efficient fastest, most secure way to test um, your school. Uh, we can also talk about uh, antigen, um, point of care uh, antigen as asymptomatic um, as, a, as another offering, um, uh, but we're really recommending uh, pool, pool testing. Thank you, and so Diane, Diane. I, yep, go ahead, Diane. Okay, thank you. Um, so TEA may have um, other things to say about um, what is recommended or required. And I believe that rapid antigen tests um, are acceptable to be done. So if someone were to call Quest and ask for rapid antigen tests, then the expectation is that they would fill that request. Yes, we can fill that request. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Great clarification. Uh, say they like what they hear today. Uh, they're already approved school um, in our opt out uh, allocation form and they want to go ahead and order. How long will it take for them to go ahead and receive their supplies and onboarding and all that stuff? So if they uh, it's it's really two weeks um, from when we get kind of the intake form with all the information that we need. Um, in order to uh, uh, receive your supplies, go through onboarding and be prepared for first test day. Thank you. Is there additional certification that test administrators need for pool testing? There is no additional certification that administrators need, no. Uh, with cohort testing, you might've answered this already with cohort testing, how are the samples identified and labeled? Oh, this is a great question. So. Um, the schools uh, have the, uh, they adopt their own nomenclature, so they are able to determine how, what they want the label to be. So if you want to go with 
um, classroom numbers. You can go with classroom numbers. If you wanna say teacher last name and grade, uh, if you want to have any sort of nomenclature, you can, you, uh, uh, what usually happens is that the, uh, the, the if it's an on, our onsite support or the school administering, um, they will type the name that they want into uh, the portal in the proper place after they use a barcode scanner. Here's my barcode scanner. This comes with the package. You scan this, you scan it into the portal, into a field, you name it. And typically you would then do the same thing. You'd scan this into the Excel spreadsheet. Um, so you know that this is associated with the roster for that um, tab of the spreadsheet for that classroom. Um, and then you would name it based on the conventions that the school, um, the school wants. And that can, and the reason we do that is so if, if the school wants to do it in a way that protects anonymity, they can. Um, uh, we, we don't we don't name the samples. Thank you. And um, with the consent, is it a one-time consent, or do they have to get parent consent each time? It's a it's a one-time global consent. So it's a consent both for the pooled testing and any individual follow-up testing that is required. So it's a one-time consent, one one size fits all. Uh, with cohorts, how are the samples not contaminated? Uh, so I'll just go through the process, which is each individual student um, would place their, uh, would typically place their um, uh, sample after they've done it into the, into the tube. The, the tube is then capped and there's an alcohol swab that is, that wipes the tube down. It is then uh, free of contamination um, uh, until it gets to the lab. When it gets to the lab, the lab uh, Quest will put um, uh, some liquid in um, so that all of the material from all of the swabs is collected into a liquid, and then they test the liquid. This is an approach called dry swab, um, which is a lot easier than uh, wet swab, which is where the school actually has to apply the liquid. That's where we started in December of last year, and we quickly got feedback that that was not feasible. Um, so we moved to a dry swab method, which means that the, the, uh, it is uh, capped in order to keep it free of contamination. And then when you test that liquid, you are essentially testing all the material um, that was collected in all of the swabs with a highly, highly sensitive PCR test. That, that is EUA authorized, it's Quest's PCR test. Uh, do you provide removal of the medical waste? Uh, we, uh, we do not provide uh, medical waste removal services. Um, uh, we would, for, there, there's no uh, real medical waste to speak of from the pooled collection. Um, and then you typically follow the state guidelines for the for the care start um, uh, but, uh, uh, disposal, but we don't provide those disposal services. Okay, so if they order rapid tests, it's up to the district on how they dispose. They following yes. the following disposal. Thank you. Following following state yes guidelines. Uh, does the support staff come with their own PPE on testing day for follow up testing and rapid tests? Do you dispose of the biohazard waste? Well, kind of just. Talk about the second part, but do they come with their own PPE or gear? They, they come with their own PPE. Yes, they do. But PPE, if you if you don't get on-site support PPE, we do not we do not send PPE with the test kits. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I, and I think I answered that one as well already on some of these. Um, for the optional staffing, can one staff possibly visit more than one school during the six hours? Yes, we answered that one. Can you please discuss more specifically about the care start test and the accuracy for symptomatic and asymptomatic? Yes, I'll, 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 uh, uh, I can, if you're, if you're interested, um, I just want to send the instructions for use and, uh, and, uh, and the actual uh, EUA authorization that goes into much greater detail. I don't want to, um, uh, uh, to, to mess that, mess, mess that up. So if you're interested, um, in, you can fill out the form. Um, and, uh, and, and I'm happy to talk to you about, um, 
and, and send all of that information. And we can also send it in a follow-up email. Um, we can include that in a follow-up email to all those who have attended or registered for this webinar. Well, I'll, I'll flag it for the FAQ too. Perfect. So how long, once we complete the form, should we anticipate a response? It's a total of two weeks for everything to get settled down to the- Yeah, the from, from when you fill out the form, we'll get, we'll, we'll, we'll be in touch with you the next day, within, within a day, and we'll kick off the process or schedule a call to discuss things further, depending on your needs. Can we use your company for systematic, sorry, symptomatic staff and students, even though the core theory here is pooled testing? Uh, yes, you can use, um, uh, uh, you, you, we can send you um, care start tests that you can um, uh, use uh, for symptomatic testing. Um, if you want on-site support, we can arrange for on-site support to administer those, but you, you would be paying it's not the most resource efficient because you might only have a couple a day per uh, per location, um, and so um, uh, the the onsite support person that comes on pooled testing day could could do symptomatic uh, uh, testing for that day. Um, but we can certainly provide the tests, and you can use our portal in order to do symptomatic testing, and that that's included. Uh, uh, that that it would just be the you know at the prices that we talked about. So this and is if you did, I would say too, if you use, say you have a school nurse, we send you care start kits, your school nurse uses our portal to do symptomatic testing. Again, physician authorization, public health reporting, all of that happens through uh, our portal. You'd still need to follow whatever additional uh, TEA guidelines there are for reporting back to the state. Uh, that's required by uh, the Department of Health. That's part of our um, workflow. So there's a couple questions around the same thing. If there's a positive identified in the pool testing, then it is recommended to do antigen testing or PCR testing for the individuals in the classroom. That's up to the school or district to decide. Um, there's a there's uh, trade-offs, right? So if you, I would say that uh, nationally, uh, most uh, schools and districts that have the choice go with PCR or go with uh, antigen because they would rather have the information much sooner. Um, even if uh, it is not as sensitive as a PCR, uh, but if uh, sensitivity is your highest priority, then um, you go. You would go with the PCR, and and there would be an additional time until you uh, can what we call deconvolute the pool, the positive pool. If we create a testing team to travel to different schools and perform testing. Could all supplies be shipped to one location with scanner and other materials be able to test at a few locations simultaneously? Can you repeat the question? So if we, the, if the district creates a uh, testing team to travel to different uh, schools and perform testing, could all supplies be shipped to one location with scanner and other materials to be able to test at a few locations simultaneously? So yeah, are they, can they get, will they get enough supplies to test at multiple schools? Oh sure, yes, we can. We can ship. Um, uh, we can ship uh, to a single. We can ship all the supplies for a district to a single location, or we can ship them to individual schools within a location. We can, um, in the workflow, you determine um, the estimated number of pools or classrooms you're expecting to test per week per school, and if you want to ship all of those uh, supplies to one place, that's no problem. How long is the consent good for? For the school year. You have any videos as to how these tests are performed? For example, an actual testing demonstration. Y yes, we have um, uh, videos where we uh, are, are, are showing videos and kind of GIFs um, showing the swabbing. And then there are videos available that we can share that uh, walk through the process of uh, the care start. Um, uh, and those were made by the, the manufacturer uh, Access Bio. From your past experience, when pool testing is done, do the students swab and the teachers collect the swabs or 
does the nurse go to room to room to help with swabbing and collection? Just trying to understand how this works. Yeah, so um, essentially, if the teacher is, um, is uh, open to observing, um, so when we started, the first state we did this in was Massachusetts in the spring, and we tested uh, 400 schools in Massachusetts. And at the time, the on-site support came at an additional cost to the school. So most schools didn't opt for on-site support because they had to pay for it themselves. It wasn't covered as part of the testing. And almost all of them did it themselves. Teachers would just observe uh, uh, the, the student's swab. They'd pass out the swabs, observe the student's swabs. The students would place the swab. The students would swab. Very rarely do you need actual support swabbing, maybe special needs or special circumstances. But for the vast majority, the students swab, they either walk up to the head of the classroom and where this is usually placed in a, or if you wanna protect privacy, you put it right outside the classroom. So students kind of parade uh, one by one. Um, that also can um, anonymize whether or not a student is consented and participating, if that's a goal, because you can give everyone a swab and someone is, is making sure that only the students that are consented or only the, as, as the students walk outside, only the students that are consented would be given a swab and take a collection. But either way, uh, uh, this, this successfully works with, with teachers observing if the teachers are willing to observe. Um, and then you could have one person walk around and collect all of these to a central location in the office, place them in the box and hand them off to the courier. Otherwise, if you elect on-site support, Yes, they would typically um, uh, be walking around classroom to classroom um, and uh, observing and collecting uh, uh, and kind of keeping track of everything. How long does it take to get PCR test results back? Um, I, uh, I defer to Edgar on, yeah. on PCR turnaround time. Right, so we're quoting about a 48 hour turnaround time and we constantly deliver before that. So publicly 48 hours, realistically less than that. Uh, so if you have a school of 800 students, how many kids would you pull test? So we would recommend that um, every uh, classroom where you have at least five consented students or four consented students and a, um, and a teacher uh, uh, test that classroom um, uh, every week, but the school can determine how the frequency of testing and, and, and how they want to, to do it. And when I say we re recommend, I should say, that's what we have observed uh, in, in, in many schools and districts. Diane, you had something to add on to that? Um, yes, Brooks, I believe TEA has um, directions on how schools should do that. Um, I'm not quite sure what the answer is from TEA's perspective, but I think that you guys have put out something um, about determining how many, how many students or staff to test. Yeah, I'll have to look. That'll be under our uh, Thank you. testing FAQ. I will say that pooled testing is an economical way to be able to test all consented students every week if the school chooses to. Uh, would the carrier go to each campus in the district or only one specific location in the district? I think you answered that already. Every before. school, yep. mm -hmm. every location. So would positives also be reported to a district's uh, public health team? Uh, to initiate contact tracing, or would we need to use the dashboard causing a time lapse? Um, positive, uh, positive, positive pooled tests um, would would be available to anyone at the school or district level that was a test champion for that org. Uh, for that school or a district wide could become a test champion for all the schools. And so they can have visibility into positives um, and negatives. Uh, uh, it is only the individual tests. And, and then positives pools are also reported to uh, the state 
uh, as part of uh, re weekly reporting that they then report up to, to ELC and to the national uh, funding mechanism. Um, individual tests are reported through public health reporting and also in the portal for the test champions. If every student family does not consent to pool testing, will their results be useful? What percentage of students need to be tested? Uh, great question there. I, I, can, I can share a study uh, that was done earlier this year uh, that essentially imputed that um, uh, even, even testing, even if you're only testing 10 to 15% of a close cohort, um, you're still getting uh, uh, usable public health information. As long as you're testing regularly, you're still um, uh, picking up um, the virus signal in that cohort. Um, so we have, uh, we definitely have schools, uh, schools that are um, uh, that are testing uh, with only five students in a classroom, um, uh, and they find it useful. Thank you. And uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and close out our Q and A session. It is eleven o'clock. Uh, if we did not get to the Q and A, we will compile those into an FAQ. Um, thank you, Timothy Edgar, for your time today and sharing everything with our participants. Thank you, it's our pleasure to have informed you all. And again, we encourage you to uh, click on that link if you need some more additional information for us to get started with uh, providing you all the information that you need. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Have a good day. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.